first up, the Rose and Crown, which has been around since 1633, although not on this particular spot until the late 1700s. Like most of the old pubs on the high street, the Rose and Crown operated as a coaching inn, where travellers could take a break, have something to eat and drink, and swap horses, a nice little money spinner for the landlord. Obviously, the arrival of the railways began to eat into this business model, and when cars also appeared on the scene in the earliest 20th century, the landlord got an extra strox of petrol so as to be a suitable destination for the fashionable new motor clubs arriving for lunch on a day trip from London. Waterside had a cluster of pubs particularly popular with canal users. The oldest pub in this part of the village is the Red Lion, dating also to 1633 and which has been a private home since 1978. Opposite was the King William IV, which had its heyday during the reign of said king in the 1830s. It closed in 1958 and was later demolished for council house building. The Lamb stood here on the corner of Waterside and Church Lane, but was also demolished in 1987 for flats, the headline in the local paper being, Lamb Gets Chop. The Griffin, the middle cottage of a row of three. On the night of the 20th of October 1940, a bomb fell and the landlord was sadly killed, the only King's Langley casualty during World War II. Just over the canal was the boatman, handy for the workers at the Ovaltine factory as well as the canal crews for whom it was named. The boatman, being on the Abbot's Langley side of the canal, closed half an hour before the King's Langley pubs due to different licensing regulations. So men, and it was mostly men, would swiftly down their pints in the boatman and rush across the white humpback bridge for a final round at the Griffin before last orders in King's Langley. <laughs> Although not strictly within the parish boundaries, the Bell in Primrose Hill also dates to the 1600s, serving as a coaching inn on the main road to Berkhamsted. It closed only a couple of years ago. <music> Towards Nashmill was, was the Railway Arms, obviously inspired by the mainline tracks running just behind it, but which closed in 1982. It is now a private home. The Red Lion in Nash Mills, right on the edges of the parish, is also listed with parts dating back prior to 1600. With a road named after it, Red Lion Lane, this was the local of the Dickinson family, whose paper mills dominated the Gade Valley for much of the 19th and 20th centuries. The pub stands in the shadow of a railway bridge built in 1837, which must have been an enormous disruption at the time, although the 20,000 navvies used in the railway's construction were probably great for business. Heading back along the main road to King's Langley, we passed the Eagle, which closed in 2008. Finally, along Kings Langley High Street, there was the Jolly Miller at numbers three to five. <music> then the Man in the Moon at 21 to 23, which later became the Swan, also providing teas and accommodation for cyclists. <music> and the Hollybush pub lived at numbers 31 to 37. These pubs all sadly fell by the wayside through the years, together with the sign of the Cock Pub at the foot of Langley Hill, which leaves just a faint imprint in the historical records. Ditto the salutation, whose imprint was so faint that we have no idea where it actually was.
They're ending on a better note for the pubs of Kings Langley. Still standing here is the Saracen's Head, Kings Langley's very oldest pub. Located in yet another listed building with parts dating from the 1500s, the Saracens was also a coaching inn. But rather than the motor clubs of the Rose and Crown, the Saracens had a cyclist rest just seen here on the side of the building, now bricked up. Running alongside the pub is a footpath called Dronken Lane. No prizes for guessing what happened here. And finally, a bit of an outlier, but nonetheless a King's Langley staple, the Old Palace, situated at the top of Langley Hill, just opposite the site of the, wait for it, Old Palace that stood here in medieval times. Handy spot for dropping in after a long day's jousting. By the 1880s, this was not only a pub, but also served as a kind of general store for this part of the village, selling groceries like bacon, sugar and tea. Perfect for all those hangovers. So that concludes our historic pub crawl around King's Langley. Cheers. Yeah.